All right, it is episode five of Hackers in Hearthstone, and with me today is Sophie. Hi, Sophie. Hello. How's it going? <laughs> oh, pretty good, pretty good. Excited to play some Tavern Brawl. <laughs> yes, we're doing the Tavern Brawl in this week. Um, Tavern Brawl is, uh, oh man, I'm forgetting the name of the card. Uh, I'm going to preface this by last week we skipped an episode because um, Battle.net was being DDoS'd, which is great. Um, and I would have skipped this week. Um, because I'm sick, but I was like, no, I'm not going to miss two weeks in a row, so we're going to do that, so we're going to push through it. Um, I'm on lots of medication right now, so it'll be super good. Um, power through, man. Just yeah. power through. Yeah, I got, this. <laughs> I got my tea. It's delicious. It's honey and uh, spearmint and peppermint, so we're going to do this. Awesome. Okay. And, Sophie, you are here to talk with us about... Uh, fashion tech stuff, so putting hardware into mostly clothing and some accessories. That's what I do. <laughs> mostly clothing and some accessories. So I'm going to let you pick your mm. deck first, and sure. then I'll start pounding you with all sorts of questions. Excellent. Um, because tech in fashion is not normally something people... Um, <laughs> Think about like Valeria meshing well together, um, but there's for definitely a plan for that. The oh, and I'm going the first, end. so nice. Um, I'm gonna ask questions <clears throat> while um, I take the world's slowest turn. Sounds good. So, what <clears throat> sort of got you started with this, and what sort of like drove your interest into mixing uh, the tech and fashion? Um. Well, there's this, okay, so what first got me into it was that uh, there's this organization called Make Fashion in Calgary, where I live, uh, which is all about getting Don't technologists run. together with uh, fashion designers and doing, like, just collaborative stuff together, because that's normally not a match that would happen naturally. So um, I first heard about them when I was in Calgary for a co-op term. Um, and I was like, okay, I need something to do. So I went, went to their second annual fashion show. And like, I was just amazed at like the results of like what they were doing. And like, it was just really cool to me because, um, I'm just gonna choose a minion here. <laughs> right. Um, going out to get the extra one. Yeah, exactly. But, oh my God, I don't know what I'm doing. For some reason, I think I was, I was like, I thought, I forgot this cost me mana. That was fail. To use the Raven Idol. Yeah, I was like, zero mana. No, it's not zero mana. Um, but yeah, make fashion like I was just I was just thought it was so cool, like, that there's people mixing tech and fashion and like, yeah, I was completely like awestruck and I was like, okay, I have to do this when I move to Calgary, because I was already planning on moving to Calgary permanently at that point. So I graduate and I'm like, all right, I don't have a job. I need stuff to put on my resume. This would be like a perfect time to do this. <laughs> so I was oh, like, all right, because they're always looking for makers. Uh, they have like big, a way bigger desire for um, like, they have a lot of designer applicants, not so much technical applicants who like want to get involved. So they're like, oh, awesome, great. You can come and like help out with us. So that's like how I originally got introduced to the two designers I'm working with now, uh, Kenzie Housko and Stacey Morgan. Um, and now, since then, we've done two pieces, or two collections for two make fashion shows. Um, and yeah, we're still collaborating. So that's kind of how it started and that's kind of where I'm at now. That's, that's really, really awesome. Um, yep. And were you doing hardware stuff prior to working on all of this? Uh, yeah, I was, um, I did a two-year diploma in electronics, so I'm like, I'm still pretty new, um, mm. in my career, but I did have some, like, training That's... beforehand, which is helpful. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, yeah, as someone who's, uh, kind of doing stuff with electronics, but completely trying to self-teach, there's, um, I notice I'm very fearful 
when I'm doing it because yeah. it's like I'm spending money on all these components and then I'm like I don't know what I'm doing I hope this doesn't destroy everything <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that's just it there's like I think there's a lot bigger of a barrier to entry in electronics than there is for like software for example because you can just go on like Code Academy and like start learning stuff and like it doesn't really cost you anything if you already have a computer so yeah yeah there's definitely the lower um like entry level thing but uh the other thing is about hardware is i noticed um like in some ways like the learning's a little bit easier in that you're kind of working in a physical space and so you're when you're putting your hands on something directly i notice it kind of changes the way your brain sort of processes that whole thing yeah, that's so true. It's very tactile, and you get like instant feedback to something you can see and touch, and like I don't know. That's that's a really appealing part of it for me, for sure. I like it. Um. So yeah, like, what are some of like the biggest challenges you've had to deal with trying to mix this hardware and fashion? Because it seems like there would be a lot of like new things that you would experience dealing with in with this in particular as opposed to just like doing normal hardware stuff yeah that is like and yeah that is definitely a thing because like um i'm just gonna do this first yeah like the thing with like fashion and technology coming together is like electronics don't like to move so if you're putting electronics in clothes, good luck with that. <laughs> it's like you have to, and like as as I've gotten better, I've actually gotten really good at um, thinking of like clever ways of making things look good and still be like stiff enough that things won't just like break the mm -hmm. second time you put it on. But like that's that's a huge challenge is just making things like able like reliable enough to last a few wears. And also, like, modularity has been super important, too. So, like, a lot of the stuff I'm doing is going to uh, to fashion hey, shows. Fashion class. Um, so, and, like, all I've been lucky. Like, I've gone to China. I've gone to uh, CES and, like, done shows there. But, like, if it's not modular and you can't, like, repair it easily, it's it's no good. So... Like, that's been really important. And also just being able to take it off, off, like, a piece of clothing so you can wash it. Because electronics also aren't washable yet. Yeah. Hopefully one day would be nice. <laughs> so, like, stinky, like, a stinky piece that you've worn, like, three times is not good either. So, like, that's been a thing. And, like, I've been getting really good at that. And, yeah. So, like, those are some of the, like, technical challenges. Um, there's some social challenges too, I think, like, people, it's hard to explain to people, like, what the value of fashion tech is, right? And it's hard on both the technical side, and it's hard on the art side, too. It's like, on the technical side, you've got the typical, like, like, oh, it's, like, aesthetic, like, I don't understand, like, what's the point? And on the art side, it's, like, a lot of people who are very, like, traditional and like stuck in their ways I guess and also there's obviously a little bit of animosity between the two groups like artists and um like the tech techie people mm -hmm. <clears throat> just because of like the way society values like technical jobs and stuff over the arts a lot of the time unfairly um and like yeah so there's challenges to getting over I that too to and like I think artists are a lot more open-minded and like down for it in general, which is good, mm -hmm. but it makes it a challenge to find. <clears throat> I mean, it's good for me because I'm like one of the few technical people <laughs> doing stuff in this field and like I really enjoy it, but like it can be a challenge to find like a diverse uh, group of technical people, but it's it's great for designers <laughs> for sure. I am um, yeah. But yeah, like, yeah, so just like stuff like that. But. So I guess like in general, it's just like an easier sell for designers to be like, hey, you can put cool things in your your like fashion items, but I am ready to learn. there's definitely still like a stigma against the arts within the tech community, unfortunately. No yeah, for sure. Oh my god, I need to take my turn. <laughs> Panic! Panic! 
I should have used all my Raven idols. I don't know what I was doing. Oh well. <laughs> oh no! <laughs> I got re sorry. I got really excited. <laughs> that is so unfair. <laughs> oh my gosh. Oh. <laughs> uh, oh wait. Oh my gosh. <laughs> oh. <laughs> oh. This Sorry, is really. I, this, this is, is this is things <laughs> working out for me because I had this like sitting there planned, and I just watched them all. Like you just filled up your entire board with minions, and I was like, oh, now it's time. <laughs> this is this is really just your ulterior motive here is just like test test the hackers like multitasking skills. <laughs> That's part of it for sure. Um, yeah. I'm gonna let you play a little bit. But okay. then I'm gonna ask you another question because I feel like my turn might be a little bit long coming up here soon. Maybe. Okay. Okay. Maybe. Sounds good. I do tend to plan out a lot of things in advance, which is kind of hard playing with these Raven Idols that do the discover a minion or discover a spell. And I don't know why I couldn't remember Raven Idol because I love Corvids. Mhm. Mm mhm. Mm Let's see. Mm -hmm. Oh, and, out on me. And, and the thing about playing this one is it's a uh, it's really hard to know what you're going to need. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you're like, oh wait, that was great when I had one more mana, <laughs> just one more. We're gonna, we're gonna do this. Oh no. <laughs> well. Good um, game. And he has charge. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, my question for you is going to be, like, what is the favorite thing that you have worked on so far in mixing, like, hardware and the fashion? Is there any piece or particular, like, part of the piece that you really, really enjoyed working on? Um, definitely the one I just made, uh, which is called, it's a collection called Gamer Girls, so obviously relevant to my interests. Yes. <laughs> um, so it's two uh it's two dresses. Um it's two dresses and the whole point of it is to is for two women to compete against each other like on their dresses. And it's it's like great. Like our original concept we were like, okay, we want like a video game dress, but like we had all sorts of like conflict with that because we didn't want it to be just like a passive like thing where like I don't know like we thought it was kind of like problematic to just have like a dude go up and play a video game on a on a girl. So we were like, well let's make this about like yeah, right? Like that's weird and like you know, not where we want to go with it. So we were like, okay, well let's make it about like women gamers and like women who enjoy competitive games and like totally focus it around that. So um, it was really, it was really fun to make. It, like, I think it's the first project I've really, like, put my all into, like, for myself. Because I was just, like, so stoked on it. And, like, the, the whole thing is, like, I guess I'll explain, like, the tech, tech behind it. But, um, so I made these, um, <clears throat> screens on the front of their dress out of addressable LEDs. Mm -hmm. And, um, I used an Arduino Mega to power, um, to power, to con the c to control the piece basically. Yeah. Um, because LEDs, NeoPixel LEDs, take up like a crazy amount of memory for whatever whatever reason. <laughs> yes, they do. They do. <laughs> and then I had there was about like four hundred four hundred and fourteen exactly actually LEDs on that on that piece. So that's a lot of memory. And then um, it also had a Bluetooth module on it. So my original idea was to like pair it with a phone. And so they could pair to each other's dresses and then they could play mm. they could play against each other. And so the way they, they keep track, the games are completely independent systems. So you have to pair your phones at the same time and then start the game. There's like a switch on the oh, other girl's dress. Mm -hmm. And uh I'll show them. I'll show them all. Um so yeah, you, you start the game by um, flipping the switch, and then the way you keep track of your opponent is you have shoulder pads that are sh addressable LEDs on your shoulders. 
so you can see what's happening in the game. Oh my god. <laughs> I was wondering what that face was about. <laughs> oh. Oh. <laughs> what do? Um, but yeah, so when, you're, when your opponent is like getting close to winning, you can see it nice. <laughs> yes. <laughs> uh, when your opponent's getting close to winning, you can see your shoulder, like your shoulders, like changing, like a red color, just to like different colors to show that they're progressing in the game. And then when they actually win, it'll do like crazy rainbow colors. That's so you're like, really oh awesome. crap, they won. What and then you know, so that's like that's how you kind of know what's happening. But but yeah, that's that's really neat. Like playing against someone on the dress and yeah I, I identify with the difficulty of dealing with neopixels sometimes but yeah they're harder like people are like oh you just put leds on clothes i'm like yeah just put leds on clothes <laughs> oh, <my word. laughs> i like, i mean yeah because I, I did my hula hoop project and i had a hard time trying to figure out okay how am i going to power these inside of a hula hoop in a way that's going oh, to make sense my. And also fit a controller that can power all of them inside of the hoop also. Because the, the inner diameter is really the only thing back in there. You're oh, yeah. going to destroy me, even though I have, like, ridiculousness <laughs> on the board. Yeah, you have board control. <laughs> it doesn't. <laughs> it doesn't matter, because, like... <laughs> Here, I'm going to throw away all my dragons. Trade a dragon. Trade some dragons. <laughs> Um. Death does not scare me. We can't do enough Aww. damage. All right. We're gonna do the. All right. We're gonna do this. Uh, uh, sure. We'll go with that. What you out. I don't think that. Yeah. Death rattle in this case for some of these doesn't make no. sense. Yes. I was like, I was looking at that card and I was like, why did I choose that? I'm so used to playing like <laughs> constructed and being like, this is a good card in constructed. It's like, no, it's not a good card here. <laughs> when, when your entire deck is filled with the the Raven idols, it doesn't really do anything. So. No. no. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Shit, I can't really. Promise. I can't do anything with this guy, but it's fine. I still just I'm go. happy you're finally using the bananas that you got from. Uh, yeah, that's helpful King, for you. Uh, Mugla. <laughs> uh, uh, needs more cards. <laughs> I I have a thing that lets me draw cards until you have as many as your opponent, but it doesn't look like I'll be using that. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <see. laughs> that was my next level strat. Mad hacks. <laughs> oh man. Please, no. Uh, please. None of these are good. <laughs> oh my. This is, oh. That's not gonna help. That's not gonna, alright. Oh. This is, this is bad. I'm. <laughs> now I need now to I'm draw. Long turns. All right. That's okay. <laughs> I just need to draw more red balls. Yeah. Um. I have more questions for you. I got distracted though. <laughs> um. So, like, how do you get your ideas for what you're working on? And are there any key places where you draw your inspiration from for, uh? The, like the hardware stuff that you put in these. Oh boy. This is a card. I love the unstable portal so much. I know. It's so good. And then this happened. <laughs> I just got this out of a pack and I'm like, that card is crap. Well. Can attack heroes. Oh. Per proof me wrong. <laughs> um. um but yeah, inspiration. Uh, I think most of my inspiration is just drawn from my life, I think. Like, uh, my designers usually will uh, set like an overall concept for the collection. Mm -hmm. So I kind of I kind of have to work within that a little bit, but I do have like complete control over the electronics design. And the electronics design, because I'm using LEDs, is still pretty visual. Mm -hmm. And it does integrate into the uh, 
uh, the actual like physical design a lot as well. Um, I don't know what a better what the better play is here. Let me just see. See with, with this um, brawl, you're very dependent on the RNG and whatever it's gonna pull for those cards. I know it's, it's so <laughs> hit and miss. It really is. It's hard actually. to actually form a strategy as you're going. It's just like I have no idea. Yeah. Oh right, I can't hit heroes. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I you hate can't. this card. You can't oh, do anything. fail. <laughs> fail. No. Um, mm -hmm. that was bad. Feels bad, man. Game is hard when you're trying to multi. I cannot do that. <laughs> <laughs> um. But yeah, like. I think most of my inspiration is just drawn from like my own experiences. Like this last piece, like I was like, well, like usually we put a huge focus on hiding electronics in our pieces, but this is kind of like a really geeky like piece. It's like we can still it's still feminine, but like we had a lot of opportunity to like I don't know, kind of not maybe not hide the electronics as much and maybe just kind of live like integrate them into the design instead of trying to hide them away so what we did is instead of like covering everything we still like <clears throat> we actually have like one of the enclosures this is like a crappy prototype of okay. our enclosure that we made for the back piece but we made like an enclosure for the arduino mega and um <clears throat> We had the, the cords actually coming out outside the dress to the shoulder pieces, but we had like really good cable management. So like, we used these like spiral wrap things to just cover up the cords. And if we had more time, we could have even like put something, like embellish them or something. But they actually ended up not looking bad at all. They were just, um... Wait a sec. Do I win? Oh. Do you? Not this turn. <laughs> Next turn. <laughs> Next turn. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, so, like, that was, like, a thing that I pushed this year, and it actually ended up working out pretty well. So, just, like, I don't know, my, a lot of it is just, like, my experiences and, like, what I think will make a better interactive experience, what will make, like, a better piece. And, yeah, I think that's mostly it. And I think that's probably true for a lot of creatives as speaking as like a not creative, very creative person myself, but getting more so, I guess. <laughs> as you get experience with it and working with all of this. What to do? Yeah. Um, okay, I'm, I don't want to end my turn yet because I know I'm going to die. <laughs> <laughs> okay, fair enough. Um, so I wanted to make sure I got in the question um, that if people now. were interested in doing what you do, uh, what would you suggest what they do, do as kind of like their first steps to getting their feet wet with this sort of thing? Um, I think it depends on your background. If you're coming from like a, a not electronics background and maybe you're more artistic or you even have no like skills in this area yet, um, I think Adafruit has got some really good resources for wearables in particular. Um, I'll wait to do this. <laughs> um, yeah, so I think Adafruit's great for for fashion, fashion tech stuff because they have a lot of stuff specifically catered to that. And a lot of the other maker websites too are getting, like, they have a lot of tutorials and stuff just for, like, basic electronics knowledge because they think that's that's fairly important. And it's important for, like, safety too to, like, know stuff about batteries and things that are going on your body. So it's like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, be safe. <laughs> yeah. Um, and, like, so that's that's fairly that's just like working oh, through it if you're if you're new to electronics um if you're an electronics person trying to get into it uh if you're like me and like collaborating with people i would suggest like maybe finding oh, local designers on. maybe even like starting up a meetup group or something because i think like what really helped me was like the collaborative uh stuff that make fashion had to offer and like i could learn from so many different designers and like it's really like it does eventually rub off on you like even if i wasn't that confident like going in like i feel like i have a lot more like say and value like valuable things to say now than when i did so i think that's a good way of doing it awesome yeah um 
and you killed me. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Which kind of works out perfectly, you know, kind of finishing up our final question. You murdered yeah, yeah. me, but... Um, <laughs> All Thank right. you for coming on and talking about stuff. Um, so you have a site for the fashion stuff you work on, correct? Yeah, I do. Um, I, I can link it in the description for the YouTube video once this goes up, as well as I'm probably going to link Adafruit anyway, because that's such a good resource for getting started with hardware stuff. Sure. Um, you should link uh, Make Fashion too, so if people are interested in doing like runway kind of stuff they're taking uh proposals for next year's fashion show if people are interested in applying awesome yeah <laughs> <That's> <laughs> super cool yeah thanks again yeah thanks bye